Hello everyone and welcome back to my let's play of Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. And today we play as uh, Toby, at least for a little while. And, you know, as the best nose in the British Empire, I'm pretty sure we will be able to finish this case uh, in this episode. I mean, why else would they have used Toby? <coughs> ah, we have to go outside now. Can I run? Can. Toby. Is there another body in here? The intruders entered the shed for some reason when they were making off with the silverware. Uh, yes. I guess I have to follow this trail right now. Into the well? No. Over the wall. The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. Uh, the trail was lost. Okay. <laughs> so now what? What do I do? Uh, am I like done? I do have to like find something else. Guess this is the trail that goes back to the uh, to the shed. Is there like something else I can find here? Or can I switch characters somehow? Well, let's go back into the, uh, let's go back into the house and see if I can find something else. That's nice. I can open doors by barking. And Sherlock has locked himself out. Okay, can't do anything there. Hello, Lestrade. Good day, my lady. Lady Brackenstall was on that chair too, Toby, but we are searching for another trail. Okay, it's her. No. Is it you? Nope, not Sherlock. Well, it doesn't look like it's anything in here. 
I bet it's you, Lestrade. Okay, I am going to patrol the entire fucking garden. To see if I can find some traces. something like here in the well the scent leads to the well I should check it yes you should the criminals left the house through the French window they walked to the shed then across to the well before fleeing by climbing over the wall I wonder why they chose such a winding route. Probably to ditch some stuff and find some stuff. There's something glittering at the bottom there, but how can I reach it? Uh, with the buck. Uh. I need a hook. Okay, so I need a hook. Okay. But it's probably the, the the silverware that's down there. Well, this hook might be useful. So there's that. This old suitcase sounds hollow. It must be empty. Small gardening tool. Nothing of great interest. Hmm. Bags of seed. Some empty bags were recently moved. Strange, so there's nothing really in there. There's something... Okay, use that, then use that. Silverware. This is hardly a coincidence. Okay, what is there to see about the fork? The Brackenstall coat of arms. It appears that we have found the stolen silverware. Yes. I think so too. But now we check the suspicious places found by Toby completed. So what else do we have to do? Inspect the room where Lady Brackenstall is resting. Investigate the murder at the Abbey Grange. Is there something else? Uh, dialogue about the silverware. We found your silverware. We found your so, silverware. So you know, there's Lady that. Brackenstall. It had not been taken very far. Is that true? I am very thankful to you, Mr. Holmes. Your ladyship. And that's all. But you. We found your mistress's silverware. Oh, that's good news. You really are as clever as they say. Indeed. Hmm. 
Okay, now what? Oh. Okay, so there's nothing on there except for the times. Family mid Family business booming. The Randall gang is back on the street. Less than a fortnight ago, this infamous fa family of burglars, the Randalls as they are known, made their reappearance by way of a brutal but successful intrusion into one of the wealthier homes in Sydenham. Police are already on their trail. However, the details of the crime are being kept confidential, including the name of the victim. Including that of the name of the victim. A witness was able to provide a precise description of all three men. And this will surely give the police a chance to complete their profile on this family of delinquents. We would take the liberty of reminding our esteemed readers about this highly dangerous band. And to provide the full description as it is available at this moment. The gang has been in business for some considerable time. Being a family of three. A father and his two sons. The elder Jack Randall is a man in his 40s and already grey haired. While of average height and build. Being the mastermind behind the burglaries, he retains control over his sons, both of whom are close in age, but very different in appearance. The first son, William Randall, is tall and broad-shouldered with a small, disproportionate head. The younger brother, Melvin Randall, is of a somewhat weaker constitution and is a, as skinny as a rake. The gang is wanted not only for their frequent thefts and break-ins, but for the exceptionally brutal pirate career they enjoyed before returning to England. Be alert and may your valuables stay safe. The description of the Randall gang provided by Lady Brackenstall is identical to the one in the Times article. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, knotted rope and a sharp knife. Sailor background. That could indicate that the intruder had a sailor's background. Yeah, that, that, uh, I was already kind of assuming that. Criminals identified. The Randalls are well known. Randall's blamed. The robbery was faked and the whole story invented in order to blame Sir Eustace's death on the Randalls. Or the testimonies and the evidence match and point to the Randall gang. I'm... I am... I... I don't know. I think that what happened... I, I don't... Well, it might still be a relationship between uh, Lady Brackenstall and... Uh, what's the, uh, the other woman's name? Theresa? But uh, what I think happened is that uh, he, like hit her and then the th and then Theresa like shoved him or something and then he knocked his hat on the um, what was it the thing near the fireplace and that way he died but now they are protecting each other or something that that must be it silverware found uh oh what let's see No. Oh, what does this mean? Robbery is the motive. Robbery is confirmed as the motive for the crime. The criminals may have plans to return for the silverware that they dumped or imitated robbery. The robbery could have been imitated to explain Sir Eustace's death. The silverware was not supposed to be found. Yeah, that's. That's going to be it. Also, I'm going to say that it was an accident, but I am not entirely sure about that. It might still be murder. <laughs> Although, you know, if it's like Lady Brackenstall or Theresa, one of them, I don't think they actually have the, um, the strength to kill him in a single blow. Please leave my Mary alone. Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. <laughs> yeah, shut up. I'm suspecting you.
Inspector, I have recovered the stolen silverware. You are a wizard, Mr. Holmes. And where is it? In the garden well. Excuse me? Unique, isn't it? Rather absurd. What is the point of stealing silverware and then throwing it down into a well? Perhaps it was used as a temporary hiding place, or simply the thieves wanted to get rid of it. It is up to us to solve this mystery. Okay, what what do I do now? Do I have some evidence that needs examining? No. Um, but I do kind of want to... This door leads to the upstairs bedrooms. Apparently the criminals did not venture there. So yeah, I have to investigate that room. A hunt. A fur trader's cabin. Okay, but it doesn't look like there's anything there. So we have to get into this safe somehow. Let us try to open this safe. Yes, let's this try safe it. Can be cracked. I only have to pay attention. The dial will vibrate when it is set to the correct number. Okay. So does it actually have to be a number or one of the things in between? I kind of want to know how obvious the vibration is. Oh, it's. <laughs> it's fairly obvious. Okay. that and what will the last one be 17 uh, antique so. coins possibly of value but they're scattered without care more coins, it is common practice to keep one's valuables in a safe behind a painting. It should not really pose a challenge for a criminal. But there is a medical report, which is probably really important. That's why we're going to take it. Uh, let's see, Sir Eustace, your current physical and mental state is of great concern. There are several signs of hepatic decompensation. The last time that we met, your eyes were bloodshot and your skin was tinged with yellow. There's a particular odor from your breath that's common in those suffering from liver damage. Then there are the lung abscesses that we have discussed. The leg cramps you have described to me are caused by an alteration to the nervous system, which, or um, by an alteration, I guess, to the nervous system, which in turn is caused by an excess of alcohol. That includes the tremors. Your liver seemed excessively hard at the time of your examination, which is a sign of an evolving chirosis. There are also signs of ascites, fluid in the peritoneal cavity, which are evident with your swollen stomach. 
The pain beneath your left rib. Uh, the pain beneath your left rib indicates a pancreatic malady, which may lead to fatal and fulminant pancreatitis. Your condition may pose a risk to others. Your excessive alcohol consumption lowers your self-control and heightens your aggression. I am available to help you with this problem. There are a number of treatment options. Hmm. Oh, what a horrible thing. Oh, what a horrible thing. I guess she knows about it. Sir Eustace's doctor speaks of his violent behavior. Yes, Sir Eustace was an extremely violent man. A detestable human being, to be more precise. It is true that he once threw a decanter at me, and all because I dared to stand up to him in defense of my mistress. Sly devil. God forgive me that I should speak of him so now that he's dead. But a devil he was, if ever one walked the earth. We met him only 18 months ago. She'd only just arrived in London. Yes, it was her first voyage. She'd never been from home before. One of with his title and his money and his false London ways. If she made a mistake, she has paid for it, if ever a woman did. She doesn't have any friends here, so it was specially hard for her. Hmm. Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. Okay, well, let's speak to Lestrade about this. What do you know about Sir Eustace, Inspector? What was his reputation? A charming man when sober, but an absolute demon when he was drunk. In such moments, he was apparently capable of anything. Why, once he splashed fuel on Lady Brackenstall's dog and set it alight. Another day, he threw a decanter of wine at Miss Wright's head. Hmm, the alcohol seemed to madden him. Really? You don't we say. Were to intervene several times to avoid a scandal. Because we don't want that. Okay. So, um, investigate the murder at the Abbey Grange. So, let's start, uh, with some of this. Inspector Stale, Sir Eustace had a severe drinking problem. Once he set Lady Brackenstall's dog on fire, another time he threw a decanter at Theresa. Domestic violence. From Australia, no personal life. Let's see. Lady Brackenstall married Sir Eustace shortly after arriving in England and remained at home during that time. There's a little possibility that she or her maid are acquainted with anyone in the country, or a lady is acquainted with someone from the Rock of Gibraltar. I think that must be it, because basically in this game, Everyone is somehow, or everything is somehow connected. And so far there is no connection at all to this rock. So, that has to be it. Oh, I guess it can be a poker blow. Murderous visitor, wait what? So Eustace was murdered by one person who was visiting that night. It was he who tied up Lady Brackenstall. He's tall and strong. Look for Sailor. The person who was visiting that night was probably a sailor. So we can investigate that. But what if we change this and this? What happens then? Death of Sir Eustace was an accident caused by a struggle with his wife. Nah. 
I would absolve her, but I don't think that is actually what happened because we still missed that one person who knows how to make sailors knots. Uh, no. Okay, so far I think this might be uh, it. Holmes, don't look at me like that. All right, search for possible sailor suspect. How the hell do I do that? Oh, what a horrible thing. Please leave my Mary alone. She do I have some clues on the photograph? Oh, what's this? Archive? Yeah, I thought so. Rock of Gibraltar, 1893, the name of the ship and the date of Lady Brackenstall and her maid's voyage from Australia. Oh, for a moment I thought it was actually from Gibraltar, but apparently not. Um, but back to Baker Street, and it actually looks like, <laughs> you know, I was kind of, I was kind of kidding, you know, at the start of this episode when I said like, with Toby we're going to finish this in this episode, but it... It looks like we might actually be able to finish this this episode, unless the whole sailor thing is going to explode and you know result in another episode. But yes, that was uh, une unexpected. <laughs> and I'm going to be pissed if it turns out to be just a domestic violence uh, incident. I don't believe that for a moment. Search the Rock of Gibraltar, uh, 1893, East Africa Company, Rock of Gibraltar's arrival. The Rock of Gibraltar, a bulk carrier from the Adelaide, Southampton, London line, has returned from a six-month voyage through India, New Zealand and Australia. The ship brought to England Miss Mary Fraser, the heiress of Fraser family, owning land and tin mines in Australia. This reportedly beautiful young lady is presently engaged to Sir Eustace Brackenstall, one of the wealthiest gentlemen in Kent. Here okay. Is. So, we have that. So now, we need to go uh, to Wiggins. The shipping company the Adelaide Southampton London line and its address interesting it must be the place where they keep the records including the one for the crew of the Rock of Gibraltar I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard they'll give it to you without any problems but I have another solution I'll call in the specialist yeah why you do it the easy way if you can do it the hard way um... It's Wiggins, isn't he over here? Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? At your service, Mr. Holmes. I need a register, my young friend. If you could borrow it, there will be half a guinea for every one of you. I need the crew list of the Rock of Gibraltar in 1893, and their current employment. I'm straight on it, Mr. Holmes. Do you really think they'll find it, Holmes? My secret police is better than the Yard in many ways. Three hours later. Here it is, Mr. Holmes. But we can't take it back. It's too risky. Put it on the table. I'll take care of it. Good work, young Wiggins. Uh, this table? I guess so. This list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar, on which Lady Brackenstall and her maid made their voyage. Lady Brackenstall does not know anyone in England. This must mean that someone on this list is our mysterious visitor. Yes. And these are the lists of the senior officers of the Adelaide Southampton London Line ships. Let us find out who was in London upon November the 7th. 
I do not think that this sailor has any... Okay. Um... What do we have here? Gaia... Rock of Gibraltar? This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. Okay, hold on. I, uh... Okay, it's 7th November. Uh, who else do we have? Jack Crocker, he's not on this list. Henry Southward, he's not on this list. Uh, I do not think so. Oh. Ernest J. Woody is not on this list. Thomas Walker is not on the list. Herbert Whittington is not on the list. And William Partledge. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. Okay, so next one is the Bass Rock. Uh, Mr. Jack Crocker departed from... So he actually was here. Mr. Jack Crocker was in London upon the date of the crime, and he is due to depart in two days. Uh, so, who else do we have? Henry Southward is not on this thing. Uh, Ernest J. Woody is not on this thing. Thomas Walker is not on this thing. And Herbert Whittington is not on this thing. So what else do we have? St. Thomas was not present in London at the time. Uh, Mr. This Whittington. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. This officer is still at sea. Therefore, he cannot be involved. Um, okay, so I apparently missed a couple of them. So we need to find Walker, Southward, and Cro no, wait, Crocker. Only Southward and oh, here. This officer is still at sea. Therefore, he cannot be involved. So we only need to find Walker. Uh, let's see. <coughs> Bartlett, Hawking, Clan, I guess. Gordon, Tyler, Bustle, Chill, Crocker, Chalmers, Davison. Okay, he's called Thomas. Maybe I should look for their first name. Uh, Thomas Walker. This Heal. officer is still at sea. Yeah. Therefore, he cannot be involved. So we have to find Jack Crocker. Captain Jack Crocker is our mysterious visitor. He was the only one around at the time of the murder. Okay. Good to know. Call Crocker to confront him. This Crocker. Do you think? It would be interesting to meet him. Our young friend should be able to find him. But yes, we'll um, we'll do that next time because uh, I'm running out of time. And uh, I, but I suspect we will actually be able to solve this case in the uh, next episode. So for now, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll speak to you guys later.